In this video, I will show you how to approximate the value of an integral using a Riemann sum. We will use a couple different varieties. We have the left rectangle approximation method, and we will also use the trapezoidal sum approximation method. Later in the video, I will show you how to sketch a function that will cause right rectangle approximation method to give you an underestimate while simultaneously causing the midpoint rectangle approximation method to give you an overestimate. Very interesting stuff. Number one, given f is a function that is continuous, differentiable, concave up, and decreasing everywhere, values of f of x at specific x coordinates are given in the table below. Part A. Approximate the value of the integral of f of x from 1 to 9 using a trapezoidal sum. That's called TSAM. And the three subintervals indicated in the table. Then state with a reason whether your approximation is more than or less than the true value of the integral. We will be using three trapezoids to help us estimate the area under the curve since uh, the integral of f of x from 1 to 9 would be the area under the curve from 1 to 9. Keep in mind that the area of a trapezoid is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. The trapezoid has these two bases which uh, in this picture are vertical. This trapezoid is sort of sideways from uh, a, the usual trapezoid that you might be used to. So this side on the left we will call base 1, and this vertical piece on the right is base 2. Because this trapezoid is sideways, the height, whoops, the height to which we refer is horizontal. So the distance between the bases is the height. We will record the information that we need to find the area of each trapezoid on this chart, starting with the intervals. So we have an interval from 1 to 4 based on these x values. So that's our first interval, from 1 to 4. And then we have another interval from 4 to 5 and a third interval from 5 to 9. Consider the first interval from 1 to 4. These are the x values of the bases. The size of base 1 will be the value of the function at 1. So let's see. Here's 1. Um, f at 1 is 23. So this will be the size of base 1. So we have 23. Similarly, the size of base 2 will be the value of the function at 4. All right? It's going to be the height of the function at 4. And that is 11. So base 2 is 11. So let's get the rest of these values off of the chart. So we already saw that... Um, at an x value of 4, the base is 11. At an x value of 5, the base will be 8. So I'm going to have an 8 here and here. And at an x value of 9, the height will be 1. So base 2 will be 1 for the third trapezoid. How about the height of the trapezoid? So remember, the height of each trapezoid uh, is the distance between the bases. So it's just going to be the width of each interval. So the distance from 1 to 4 is 3. So that will be the height of the first trapezoid, the distance between the bases. Similarly, um, the distance between the bases for the second trapezoid is going to be 1 unit because we're talking about 4 and 5. Maybe I'll change the numbers just so you can visualize more easily. The interval from 4 
to 5. This is one unit apart, so the distance between the bases is 1. In the same way, the distance between 5 and 9 is 4. So that is going to be the height of the third trapezoid, the distance between the bases. To approximate the value of this integral, which is the area under the curve from 1 to 9, we will add the area of three trapezoids. So I'm going to do 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times height three times. So here we go, 1 half. So I'm looking at this first trapezoid. So base 1 plus base 2 times height. So that's the first trapezoid. Here comes the next one. 1 half base 1 plus base 2, 11 plus 8 times the height. One more. 1 half base 1 plus base 2, so 8 plus 1 times the height. So this is an expression for the value of this integral. This entire thing would represent the approximate area under this curve. So I'm going to put a box around this because on a free response question, this would be a perfectly acceptable answer. However, it is traditional to go ahead and simplify at least the first factor right here. So I would have, for example, uh, area equals 23 plus 11 is 34, and then half of 34 is 17. So we would have 17 times 3. If we do the same thing for the other terms, then we have this. Now this does simplify down to 157 over 2, which equals 78.5. We are also supposed to state with a reason whether this approximation is more or less than the true value of the integral. Notice that in the setup of the problem, we were told that the function is concave up and decreasing. And that's why I drew it this way, concave up and decreasing. So you can tell by looking at this model that uh, this is going to be an overestimate. Do you see how the trapezoid includes a little bit of area that is above the curve? And we only want the area that's below the curve. So our approximation is going to be a little bit more than the true value of the integral. In order to write our justification, you will need to memorize this information. The left and right rectangle approximation methods will give you an overestimate or an underestimate depending on whether the function is increasing or decreasing. The other met methods, the midpoint rectangle approximation method or the trapezoidal sum approximation method, the one we're doing right now, these methods will give us an overestimate or an underestimate depending on the concavity of the graph. So right now we are doing trapezoidal sum approximation. So we need to look at the concavity and the concavity will be our justification. So here is your justification. The approximation will be more than the true value of the integral because f of x is concave up. Here, let me zoom out for a second so you can see the whole problem. Soak it in. For part B, we need to approximate the value of the same integral, but this time using a left-sided rectangular sum, or LRAM. For the left rectangle approximation method, we will use three rectangles to approximate the area under this curve. Because it is a left rectangle approximation method, focus on the left side of this rectangle. The left edge should touch the curve, like this. We know that the area of a rectangle is base times height. So we need to put enough information on this chart 
so that we have the base and the height so we can come up with the area of the three rectangles that we are using for the approximation. So uh, for the first interval, by the way, we're using the same three intervals as before. So the first interval is from one to four. Let's use that as an example. So this would be the one and this would be the four. The base of the rectangle is the distance between the one and the four. So that's gonna be three. When the interval is from four to five, that, uh, that's one unit apart. So the base of that ranked rectangle will be one. When the, when the interval is from five to nine, the base will be four because these are four units apart. What about the height of the rectangle? This is left rectangle approximation. So you should focus on the left side of the interval, the one, the four, and the five. That's because when we want to find the height of the rectangle, uh, it's gonna be based on the x value of the left side of the interval. Because look, here's the rectangle. The left side of this rectangle is at one. The height of the entire rectangle is just the value of the function at one. The value of f at one is 23. So that's the height of the first rectangle. Similarly, the height of the second rectangle will be the value of the function at four. That's 11. The height of the third rectangle will be the value of the function at five. That's eight. Our approximation for this integral, in other words, our approximation for the area under this curve, will be the sum of three rectangles. So base times height plus base times height plus base times height. So that's going to be 3 times 23 plus 1 times 11 plus 4 times 8. This is a perfectly acceptable answer for a free response question, but the area is also equal to 112. Now, how about the rest of the question? Is this approximation more or less than the true value of the integral? Well, let's look at our model for a clue. Notice that this rectangle includes a little bit of area that is above the curve. So this is going to be an overestimate. So we know the approximation is more than the true value of this integral based on the model. But what about the justification? We need a reason. Again, you need to memorize this information. The left rectangle approximation method will give you an overestimate or an underestimate depending on whether the function is increasing or decreasing. In the setup, we were told that f of x is decreasing. So this will be our justification. So we will say the approximation is more than the true value of the integral because f of x is decreasing. Problem number two. For some function g, r ram gives an underestimate for this integral, but m ram gives an overestimate for that integral. Sketch a possible graph of g below and explain how you know your graph meets the requirements above. Let's start with RRAM. That's right rectangle approximation method. Let's draw a sketch that will be an underestimate, and then we will decide why it's an underestimate. Here's a possible sketch of g of x. Let's see if right rectangle approximation gives an underestimate. Right rectangle approximation means that the right side of the rectangle will touch the function, like this. This will definitely be an underestimate because I can see that the rectangle is missing all of this yellow area under the curve. But what will be our justification? According to this information, which you need to memorize, if I want to know why RRAM is giving me an underestimate, 
I just need to look and see whether the function is increasing or decreasing because whatever it is, that will be my justification. Looking at my sketch, I see that g of x is decreasing. So I say rram gives an underestimate because g of x is decreasing. What about mram? We want mram to give us an overestimate. Let's see if this same sketch will give us an overestimate for mram. mram stands for midpoint rectangle approximation. So I've drawn my rectangle so that the midpoint touches the function g. However, there's a problem. Uh, a sketch like this will not actually tell me clearly whether I'm looking at an overestimate or an underestimate. That's because mram simultaneously misses some area under the curve and includes some extra area that is above the curve. Here is a little trick that I use to get around this. MRAM and TSAM are opposites, meaning if MRAM gives an overestimate, then TSAM will give an underestimate. So our strategy will be to draw a sketch that will cause TSAM to give an underestimate, which will make MRAM be an overestimate. Remember that TSAM stands for trapezoidal sum approximation method. So let's draw a trapezoid and see what happens. Okay, so here comes my trapezoid. Here's base one, and here is base two. And now I connect them to see what happens. Hmm, this is going to be an overestimate. I want this to be an underestimate, but it is an overestimate. I can tell because the trapezoid includes this uh, sliver of yellow area that is above the curve. Looking back at my notes, which you need to memorize, I can tell that TSAM gives an overestimate or an underestimate based on the concavity of the curve. So, we have the wrong concavity. This sketch of G is concave up, so we need to modify it so it is concave down. But be careful, we already decided that we wanted G of X to be decreasing. So I don't want that to change. So I'm going to make it concave down, but still decreasing. So I've drawn a new sketch of G. It's still decreasing, but this time it's concave down. Let's draw the trapezoid and see if it's going to give us the underestimate that we want. So here's my trapezoid, the bases. Now I connect those bases. Indeed, this will be an underestimate because the trapezoid is missing all of this yellow area under the curve. It's time for the justification, but remember the trick. Because TSAM gives an underestimate, that means MRAM gives an overestimate. So I will start off by adding MRAM gives an overestimate because, but be careful, do not mention TSAM, even though that's kind of what we did. We're still going back to the notes that we memorized. MRAM will give an overestimate or an underestimate depending on the concavity. So the concavity is the justification here. MRAM gives an overestimate because g of x is concave down. Notice that even though I changed the sketch halfway through the problem, this new sketch satisfies both conditions. RAM gives an underestimate because g of x is decreasing. Notice that it is decreasing. And MRAM gives an overestimate because G of X is concave down. It's also concave down. 